It's showtime. It is time to talk about some Beetlejuice patterns. Hello, my name is Sonnet and I like to talk about all things crochet and crafty. And in today's video, we are doing a special Beetlejuice uh, themed episode. As you may know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice by Tim Burton was recently released to theaters and I just thought it would be fun to have a Beetlejuice themed video where I make a couple of Beetlejuice projects and share them with you all. So let's go ahead and dive into those projects. I did make a total of four of them. The first one I want to talk about is definitely the smallest, but probably one of my favorites. And this is the little felt Beetlejuice. Now this is a pattern by Soko Felt. I have talked about them before on my channel. I love making little felt cuties. They are so fun and they work up pretty quickly, which is really nice for upcoming craft markets. What's nice about the Sokol felt patterns is that they do include an SVG file. So if you do have a cutting machine like I do, if you have a Cricut machine or something along those lines that can cut felt, you can actually upload those SVG files and you can cut the felt out using your cutting machine, which saves a ton of time. I will probably make this little Beetlejuice felt cutie over and over and over again. I think this would make a really cute keychain. You could turn this into like a little brooch. Can you imagine? Ooh, that would be cute. Or if you have a Beetlejuice bag or something, it would maybe be a cute little kind of addition to your bag, whether it be a pin or a keychain or some kind of dangly charm. I think that would be so fun. That was the first project. Beetlejuice the Felt Cutie by Sokol Felt. This next project you can see is a little, um, Fibery, <laughs> jeez Louise. So this next project is the Beetle Boy pattern and this is by the designer Nerdy Knits. This is an Amigurumi Beetlejuice and he's really cute. I think his hair is a little too long. I might trim up his hair just a little bit, but I did crochet him with some chenille yarn. I did use my Parfait Chunky for him and he worked up really fast. I was able to pretty much make him on stream in one stream, which is really good. He of course has the purple eyeshadow and then I did use some green glittery eyes. I would have been able to finish him really quickly if it weren't for his hair. Because his hair is all the individual strands of yarn, it did take a lot of time. And then I did add some Chanel yarn for these little green pieces here. I'm sorry, fluff is just flying everywhere. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this this amigurumi, ah. But I did add the chenille yarn little details as well because he's got that like, I don't know, what is it? It's like mossy kind of gooey green gunk on his face. You know what I'm talking about. So I did add that and because I was using a chenille yarn for those details, I wanted to burn the ends so that they don't shed. Well, funny me, I'm burning all of the ends of these chenille pieces and I've already done his hair. I've already brushed it out. It's already crazy. Can you guess what happened? His hair lit on fire. And I'm not talking about like a little bit of sparks. I'm talking his hair was a flame. I was this close to running and grabbing the fire blanket, <laughs> but I was luckily able to put him out before it was a catastrophe. Oh my goodness gracious. If my husband is watching, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but it was pretty scary. So let this be a warning to you. Uh, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend that at all. And that way you're not like me and you don't set your amigurumi on fire. So this next project was a roller coaster of a ride. Oh my goodness. I started off super excited. It then turned into quite a giant disaster and it ended up being okay. And now I'm actually kind of happy with how the project turned out. It was a lot. <laughs> and that project is the sandworm hat. This is a pattern by Gingered Crochet. And I just wanna say this quick disclaimer right now. All of the issues I had with this pattern, I'm not attributing it to the written pattern itself or the designer. I will take full responsibility. The reason this turned into a disaster was maybe user error. I don't know what happened. Just putting that out there, all of the issues I have, we'll just say 
they're my fault and not that of the pattern or the designers. But I started making the sandworm hat and I was super excited. It took me two and a half days alone to make just the sandworm portion of this pattern. There is a lot that goes into it. There's measuring of felt, there's coloring the felt, there's chenille stems, electrical wire. There's tons of pieces for this head and it was a lot. After two and a half days of working on the sandworm, it was finally time to start crocheting the hat. And the hat worked up fairly quickly. You know, it is a pretty big hat because it's longer in the back. And it took me maybe about a day to crochet up the entire hat. Then I was finally done. I was excited. The hat is complete. I immediately put it on my head to see how cool it looked and it immediately fell off put it back on my head, tried to position the sandworm so that it had a little bit more support, it immediately fell off again. And so I realized very quickly that this hat is not gonna be a hat because it's not gonna stay on. The amount of material used to create the sandworm made the bottom portion of this hat so incredibly heavy, it was not gonna stay on anybody's head. So I was faced with a decision, do I just, put aside and say, well, that didn't work out to a project that took me four days? Or do I frog about a day's worth of work and try and make something with that sandworm? Well, of course I did choose the latter and I frogged the entire hat portion of the sandworm. It was a little sad to see all of that work go, but let's be real, this is not the first time I've had to frog something that took me a long time and it's not gonna be the last. And I was excited for the idea that I came up with for the actual sandworm part. So once everything was frogged, once I had basically just a sandworm, I then put him into a pot. <laughs> so here he is. I got a little bit of moss and put it around the side. Again, you have that kind of mossy, yucky look on Beetlejuice, and so I figured that would be cool. In addition to the moss, I did include some black and white fish gravel. So there is the sandworm plant. Started off with a really cool concept of a pattern, then turned into a project that I was probably gonna have to get rid of after four days of work, but I was able to save it and make a really cool piece of decor. And I imagine if you are way into Beetlejuice, this is gonna be something that you would really enjoy to have with all of your Halloween decor. So the final Beetlejuice project that I made, of course, I had to make some Beetlejuice artwork. He's really fun. He has his little sandworm bouquet and I think it turned out really cute. I am currently waiting on the prints of him to arrive and I did make some stickers of him as well. So those are being produced currently as well. Both of the print and the stickers should be available for sale at my upcoming market, which is October 5th. If you do live in Colorado and you wanna see a really cool craft market with a ton of awesome vendors, be sure to check out the Adams County Fall Festival. Again, that is gonna be on October October 5th this year. For those of you that don't live in Colorado, the prints and the stickers should be available for purchase on my website following the craft market. I do only make a limited number of 30 prints of every single piece of my artwork. So if you are interested in the Beetlejuice print, I would be sure to grab him quickly because my prints have sold out in the past. So definitely be sure to pick him up if that is something you are interested in. But that's it. That's all for my Beetlejuice projects. I love doing these more specific themed videos as well. So if you have a movie or a property that you wanna see me make a ton of amigurumi and craft projects for, be sure to comment those down below. Also be sure to let me know, have you seen the new Beetlejuice movie? And what did you think? I like the original one just fine. It's one that I enjoy watching when it's on or I do seek to watch it occasionally, but I didn't really grow up watching Beetlejuice, so it doesn't have much of a nostalgia factor for me. But as I was making up all of these Amigurumi and these other craft projects, I did realize I didn't watch a ton of Beetlejuice the movie growing up, but I watched a ton of the cartoon as a kid. So I do feel like the cartoon holds a little bit more nostalgia and just kind of mm, 
not be Beetlejuice feelings for me. But again, I am excited to see the new one. And I know people have just been over the moon. And that makes me so happy to see everybody else so happy and excited. Also, if you haven't yet and you want to see more crochet and crafty and weirdness and just all of the fun things, be sure to like this video and subscribe. I have a lot of really fun fall and Halloween content scheduled. I am doing a collaboration in October and a lot of my projects are going to be very spooky themed. So if you haven't heard yet about the Decade Divas, I am going to leave the link for Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. She made a video explaining all of it. So if you want to learn more about that collaboration, be sure to check out that video. And I will be posting some more information about that collaboration as we get a little bit closer to October. But that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. You are so wonderful. Be sure to stay strange and unusual. And I will see you all a little later. Bye. Thank you.